This is your Daily Mojo Extra. Chris Cabrera is with the uh, Border Patrol Council and a, a friend of the show. Chris, good to see you again. Very good to see you. All right, so the southern border, it seems to be now, um, and a lot of people on the uh, in this audience have asked about it, but it seems to be down on the list of priorities once again. What's happening uh, down at the southern border? Well, you know, uh, for us, it's business as usual. Um, when Title 42 ended, we expected a big rush, and, and that rush never came. Um, however, there were a lot of people that had massed on the on the south side. Uh, well, the, the northern border of Mexico, obviously our southern border. Right. And it just kind of hung out. Um, and fast forward a month or so, and now they're starting to come across. There, there's huge groups that are coming across, obviously the women and children. And I think what people don't understand is there's there's two different methods they're using now. One of them is, you know, the traditional sneaking in or walking in, turning themselves in. And the other one is the app that the Biden administration has created, that CBP-1 app. And right. what that does is, is these folks now make an, an appointment and they show up at the bridge and somebody goes over there from the customs office, walks them into the building and they parole them into the United States and they just release them on their own recognizance. So it's, <sighs> I mean, it's, it's even worse than it was before because not only are they coming across the southern border illegally, we're releasing them from the bridge uh, right. legally, you know, and, and it's just huge amount that the people don't even qualify for, for parole, but they're releasing them anyway. All right. So does that affect the number? Because I, I had a question about that, the app and did that affect the number? Because it seems to me uh, the, the, the title 42 stuff goes away and uh, was it a 42% uh, decrease in June from May and then July's numbers are out, right? Yes. Uh, and July's were down from June. <laughs> and so the weird part is, did that have, uh, yeah, in July, uh, this is, they recorded 132, 652 encounters. So I think people are curious as to, number one, why all of a sudden the numbers went down. What was it that made the numbers go down? Does it have something to do with the app and just the way the math is done? Because it sounds fuzzy. Well, the... I don't, the, the people in that, that are coming through in that app aren't, aren't even uh, considered as, as coming through illegally. They're, they're considered coming through legally. So they're not, they weren't apprehended. They weren't caught. They, they, they came in through the bridge and they legally did something that's actually illegal. You know, they, I mean, we're, we're letting them in where we're bending the rule and we aren't, but right. Um, the folks at the bridge are, are, I guess they're they're being told to release these people into the country. Um, they don't really qualify, but they're legally allowing them to stay. So they're not they're not counted in that number, but they're still here and they're still in the country and they shouldn't be. Right. Um, and then now our, our numbers along the the river are actually jumping up. I mean, not not just here in Texas, but in Arizona, there's huge numbers. Um, I, I know what was it? I think it was last week. Just the Rio Grande Valley, the two-day total was almost 3,000 people. So, you know, around about 1,500 a day just in, in this little piece of Texas. So it is fuzzy math then. I mean, the, the, just yeah. the, the, the numbers going down, the official numbers going down along the, the ports of entry, uh, which, again, a decrease of uh, 27% from uh, July 22, going back a year. And the, the people who are using the app, who are being met, who have the appointments, in air quotes, uh, who have the appointments, yeah. those aren't actually uh, recorded in that number. And so how many of those are there? Do you have any idea? Yeah. Do we have that number? Yeah, well, I don't, I don't have an idea, but I think that's the golden number right there. If you look at, um, you know, we, we the, the apps they're tracking is, okay, how many were apprehended? And it's a such and such percent decrease. Okay, well, I, I think now what the number that people need to look at is, how many were paroled in the country and mm -hmm. what's the percent difference from the month prior or the month prior to that or the month prior to that. And I think though that number one is going to be a high number, a high percentage also. And right. then the other part is you, you, you slap that onto the back of the um, illegal entries and the gotaways. And I mean, it, it's going to, that number is going to be a lot higher than it was, than it should be. 
See, that's I would. Most people are thinking, okay, why? You know, why is this number going down? It's it's a um, it's a better it's a better number for the the propaganda. Hey, look, all these you know the the uh, illegals coming across numbers gone down in. I guess technically what they're saying is the people using the app are doing it the right way. They're, they're coming yeah, in uh, legally. Yeah. They're, I mean, it, it's, it's kind of crazy. I guess technically it is the right way, but we kind of created that right, right way. They, uh, right. Um, it, it's not necessarily a legal way, but you know, I, I guess it's legal now. Um, the other part, I think people the two things. One, if you look at our apprehension from now versus uh, Trump's last year, in office, um, mm-hmm. our, our monthly apprehensions, you look, say, um, you know, June or July of this year versus the previous year versus the previous year versus the previous year, right. you, you'll be able to see a huge difference. Um, I, I think one thing that people need to take away from this, whether you're left, right or center, is better than bad is not necessarily good. Right. Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, we're, we're, we're still getting beat down here. We're just not getting beat as bad. But at the end of the day, it's still beating. <sighs> And yeah, it's um, and th- then we've got the um, God, that just that blows my mind that they put the app in and then just decide because those people, once they're released off into the wild, so to speak, what's the likelihood of ever seeing them again showing up at their court date or whatever it is? Yeah, you know, they might show up for a couple interim court dates, but when it gets uh, toward the end, towards the brass tax, and it's it's time to uh, um, have a final hearing and they know that they're not getting to stay. Right. Uh, they, they're going to be in the wind. They're gone. And how long is it before they actually get their first court date? Is that a, a year, a month, a day, two weeks? It, it depends. A, a lot of it depends on what part of the country they're going to. Because, I mean, every every area has their, what's called uh, Executive Office for Immigration Review. So depending on how backlogged they are, some could be months, some could be years. Kids. Are kids coming across using the app, un- unattended minors? No, they're just they're just coming in. Oh, so they're just and and are are there more or less the same? Are they coming across with adults? What's the what's happening yeah, it's with the kind kids? of a mixed bag? Some of them are coming across with with other groups that mm-hmm. aren't necessarily uh, that, that they don't know, and some of them are you know we still have groups of kids that come like huge groups of kids, you know, groups of fifteen twenty kids that are all together that they just kind of you know safety in numbers and piled in together and made the trip but very rarely i mean you might have like uh two kids that know each other whether they're a family or, or friends from the same neighborhood right um but for the most part they're just kids from all over and they just kind of fall in with each other and, and and make the trip by themselves do they have um is it still uh, uh kind of their procedure that they have a, a phone number with them a lot of times yeah. and Instead of those groups of kids, do they have like one phone number for the whole group or is there like each kid has his own phone number? Yeah, each kid will have their own their own stuff, um, you know, because I mean, their parents are scattered all over the place. Now, right. not all of them, their parents are here, but the vast majority that come across their parents are already here. But they'll have a contact number for an uncle or a cousin or a sibling that that's here that they're going to go meet up with. Do we know that it really is family members? I mean, some have suggested that the, uh, uh, the the sex trafficking industry is, you know, these kids come across and they have a number and it's Uncle Bob, but it really isn't Uncle Bob. It's some uh, sex trafficker. Is that something yeah. you're and see, seeing? I think, in my opinion, I think that's where, where we're not doing enough. Um, we're not checking into it deep enough. Um, mm-hmm. I, I think if you're going to release a kid to somebody – you need to make damn sure that that somebody is who you think it that who they say it is. Right. Um, and the other, the other part of that is, I mean, even if they are going back to a parent, what kind of parent releases their kid or, or lets their kid go in care of a smuggler? Right. Um, so do we really want that kid going back with that parent in the first place? Um, because uh, it, had that been you or me, I mean, we're going to jail, right? You know? we're yeah, going exactly. To jail for child endangerment. Yeah. Um, but uh, on this case, I guess that, that we don't have enough resources of state or whoever. Nobody really wants to dig into that because it's too expensive. Right. Um, but how much is a child's uh, life and safety worth? I, I think that's what they need to be looking at. The First Amendment lives here. 
Watch and listen at thedailymojo.com.